In this lesson, we will discuss visualizing the major scale and using the Nandy method. As a beginner, you should learn to play the major scale on a single string. The next step after that is to play the same scale using all six strings. You can do so using the caged system. Caged stands for the five basic major chord shapes, C, A, G, E, and D. You can play any major scale in five different caged positions. Since caged scales are movable, they can be played over the entire fretboard in all 12 keys. Let's consider the C major scale in the E shape, where the root note is on the E and D strings. Starting on the 7th degree of the scale, which is the B located 1 fret below the root C at the 8th fret of the low E string, you can play the notes of the scale in ascending order all the way up to the last note in the shape, which is on the high E string. From here, you can play the descending scale all the way down to the first note on the low E string, and then up 1 fret to the root note. With repeated practice, you can memorize scale patterns in different keys. Now, while this regimen is good for developing muscle memory and committing scale shapes to memory, the importance of learning the notes and intervals within each shape is largely ignored. Memorizing the fret locations of each note in the scale seemed to be the only available option until now. With the Nandy method, you have a novel way to visualize the notes and intervals of a major scale, by learning how to count music notes and numbers in fourths. Now, you may be asking, what do fourths have to do with learning the major scale? Well, there are a couple of reasons why. Let's talk about the first reason. On a standard guitar, the predominantly fourth tuning directly relates to the notes on any given fret, also spaced a fourth apart. Since this pattern has an almost linear appearance, it makes note identification across all strings so much easier. Notes that are a fourth apart are separated by five half steps, which make up a perfect fourth interval. Now, to find a perfect fourth from B, for example, we have to count five chromatic notes, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, which lands us on E, a perfect fourth from B. Let's take a look at how we can visualize the notes of a C major scale on the lowest frets of the scale by moving in fourths. In the E shape, if we start from the lowest note B at the seventh fret of the low E string and move up in fourths, we can find notes B, E, A, and D on the same fret. The odd tuning of the B string forces us to move up one fret to identify a fourth up from D, which is G. We must then move to the note C on the first string. Since we have two E strings, a C can also be found on the low E string. Moving up a fourth from C gives us the note F. We have just identified all notes of the C major scale in the order of fourths, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. These notes correspond to the scale degrees 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, 4, which are also ordered in fourths. Remember, even though all major keys have different notes, they share the same interval formula, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now in the order of fourths, of course, the pattern reads 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, 4. Now let's take a look at how we can visualize the notes of the C major scale on the upper frets close to the root on the D string. Once again, we'll start on the B note, one fret below the root, and count in fourths to locate notes B, E, A, D, G, C, F in the order of fourths. Fourths B and E on the D and G strings are followed by the A note, one fret up on the B string. The D note can be found on both the E strings, which we can use to identify the notes G, C, F on the same fret of the A, D, and G strings. 
Now, as you may have observed, we split the scale shape in two in order to visualize the seven notes of the major scale first on the lower frets with their octaves on the higher frets. When we combine the two sets of scale tones, we can visualize the entire C major scale in the E shape. The identification method does not exclusively apply to the E shape, but can also be applied to any caged major scale shape. As long as you can identify the root notes in the selected shape and start counting one fret below the root from the seventh scale degree of the scale, you will be able to name and identify the notes as a chain of fourths while making a one fret adjustment whenever the B string is involved. Now, you might be thinking, why should we always start from the seventh scale degree of the scale? Why not another interval? Well, starting from any other interval would mean encountering an augmented or raised fourth, also known as the tritone, between four and seven. For example, when we start from the third degree of the major scale and count in fourths, we get intervals three, six, two, five, one, four, seven. Due to the tritone between 4 and 7, we have to move an additional fret when passing from 4 to 7 between the E, A, D, G strings, and two additional frets from 4 on the G string to the 7 on the B string. So how can we avoid the tritone from getting in the way of visualizing a strictly perfect fourth pattern? Well, we must put the intervals that make up the tritone, most importantly the 7 and 4, on opposite sides of the interval pattern if we want to visualize the intervals of a major scale as perfect fourth intervals 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, 4. Now, the second benefit to learning fourths is that we can name all of the notes in any major scale across strings much faster than counting in whole and half steps from the root. It is also much faster than having to refer to the circle of fifths to determine which notes in a major scale are sharps or flats. Let's pick a random major scale, such as F. Just like we did earlier, when naming notes of the major scale across frets, we go down a half step from the root of the F major scale, which is E, and count a total of seven notes in fourths. In the chart below, the seven notes starting from E, moving left to right, are E, A, D, G, C, F, B flat. These notes correspond to the 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, 4 intervals of the F major scale. We have just identified the notes and corresponding intervals of the F major scale in the order of fourths. We have also determined that there is one flat in the key of F, which is B flat, without having to reference the circle of fifths. Now we are able to find the notes in the same order on our fretboard. If you know your notes in fourths well enough, the next time you see a scale fret diagram in any major key in the E shape, for example, you'll be able to go down one fret from the root indicated here in red and easily identify the notes and corresponding intervals 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, 4 as adjacent fourths first on the lowest frets of the shape from left to right, followed by their octave locations on the highest frets of the shape. In this way, you can easily visualize the entire major scale in the E shape. There you have it, major scales with the Nandi method. If you want to learn more about how to visualize cage scales and their modes across the entire fretboard, we suggest the book Guitar Scales Unleashed, which is the accompanying namesake workbook and the mobile app.